All right, we're going to try something out here, like on all scenes. But um, one of the uh, challenges in the uh, Stampscapes 2 Facebook group is to uh, come up with some sort of um, rainbow um, type of scene. All right, now, I haven't really tried too many of the you know standard arcing styles of uh, rainbows before. It's kind of hard to do that with dye-based inks. I mean, we can do it with like pens or something like that, and I saw some really cool um, uh, renditions of rainbows in various media, and uh, it got me to thinking that um, I think I could try something out using that kind of that flare type of thing, like we're entering a rainbow kind of, you know, in, in real close-up, like a small section of it. And uh, I thought I would try something like that out, or at least some sort of um, rendition of, I don't know, kind of a, an abstract rainbow. All right, so <clears throat> one of the things about rainbows is it's colored light, okay? And that's the, one of the things that's it's hard to convey um, in this type of media is because when we apply these types of colors down there, if we don't make the background around it darker, the rainbow itself, the light, is going to be darker than the surrounding area. So I've chosen um, kind of the, uh, the colors of the rainbow here, but done in kind of more pastel versions. So you can choose if you're following along with me. Kind of instead of going with a red, I thought maybe a pink. Okay, because it's like a lighter form of red. Instead of a darker green, it's this one, or a, like a really bright green, like, you know, like a yellow green that might stand out a little bit more. I don't know. We might add it in there. It might need something, so we'll see how it goes. I have this color right here, blue. I don't know. Maybe the, uh, the tumbled glass might be better than this one. I don't know. Um, but you can mix and match. I just picked these. These are really convenient to go that way, and this is kind of an experiment, so. All right, so, um, here's the thing. It's it's kind of hard to kind of figure out, because usually I'm kind of going mono monotone um, with, like, blues or something like that in here, but this one's going to be broken down, so. Here's how I'm going to do it, I think. I think I'm going to put some streaks of yellow in here, all right? Then I'll go with um, a pink up top, and then I'll go with a green... Blue. I don't know. I can go. I can also do like every other color, and then use these other colors in between. Okay. There's going to have to be some overlap though, um, for blending purposes. But I don't know. We'll we'll try to get our uh, develop some sort of process here. Come up with a better <laughs> idea on uh, process here um, after this one's done. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to start from the bottom up on this one. Um, and see how that goes. Okay, I, I want to try to make it look like there's light coming from up top here. Okay, so... Um, when I do it this way, um, the stroke gets a little bit drier as I move up here, and then I'm kind of moving like this in this motion, like that. So it kind of tapers, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it kind of a tapered... Um, application of this and see how I'm going with a stronger um, application in the middle. I'm staying in this. Then when I go off to the sides, I'm kind of going a little bit lighter and plus it's drier on my paper towel like that. Okay, now I'm not sure if I should go and ink up this with this ink or if I should just go with a pure version. I'm, I think I'm going to be a little bit safer and go with a pure version, okay? because I don't want that yellow-green to go too far down here um, because I, I need to move into the blue and the blue moves into the violets, okay? So they're kind of a little bit more... I, I want these beams to stay a little bit more distinct, I think, in terms of coloring. I need to re-ink this one here. It's kind of dry. That's yeah, okay. Just make more passes with it in repetition. Okay, something like that. All right, 
I'm going to leave a little bit of a, some streaks in between too for, um, to represent um, light uh, within that space. So I want to add in some light beams into it. All right, so see how I'm doing this on my paper towel like that. Just find another spot like this, and that'll be my, you know, next color. Let's go with the pink. Let's go with the pink up top here. Uh, Marvy sells these pads in um, blank pad form, and I need to get one for this one. This pad's really starting to uh, <laughs> starting to collapse in terms of the material. That pad's probably 20 years old. The thing that's um, coming to mind, which is the thing that I, I thought I might run into, is um, it's the uh, it's this real darkness right here. So I, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to figure out something. Okay, now where this pink is overlapping the yellow, we're getting that that red. I mean, uh, orangish tone right in there. See that? And that's what we want. We want this, these combinations of colors to work for us. And that's also why you go with the, uh, the lighter version, is because two lighter versions overlapped will make <clears throat> a darker version of the blend between those two colors. So I have to keep, kind of keep that in mind. All right, let's see if I can find another spot on this. Let's still utilize the same one. Let's try the um, blue. <laughs> this is a salvia blue. Okay, salvia blue <clears throat> plus the uh, Yellow green here is making kind of a darker green in between the two of them. Okay, maybe I'll do like two streaks of this blue so that I'll still get this little streak of um, of light coming down like that in the middle. But then I'll have another another blue to blend with the uh, the violets down here. Okay. All right, let's go with this one. This is Orchid. <laughs> I'm so used to just using the same one. I'm not used to um, switching up on my uh, my paper towel areas for every color, you know. But this, in this case, it's every different color, and we need to keep those um, kind of discreet. Okay, that's a little bit too dark. Let's blot that off a little bit. And let's overlap into that other blue there. Kind of getting there a little bit. It's like we've entered a uh, <laughs> entered a uh, rainbow. Okay, now this is a. Uh, Deep lilac, so just a, kind of a darker violet, right? I think we're kind of getting there, I don't know. And I, I plan on adding some imagery to this, so we'll have to see how that goes. I want to do this in a smaller format, but doing it large gives me a little bit more space and leeway. So I don't have to uh, kind of worry about like a tight, confined area to do it in with a... Uh, uh, quarter page standard card size. All right, so um, I think I can. I think I can add some brighter tones into this. Um, let's see. I think let's go into the red. Gosh, do I want to do that though? Taking a look at some photos online, but a photograph is going to be quite different than um, um, 
trying to do it on a white piece of paper represented by inks, you know, we're talking about, um, when you see a photograph, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, capturing light from a camera. On something like this, we're um, depicting light through the use of uh, contrast. So, yeah, I'm going to have to make it darker somehow. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, so if I go um, maybe with a little bit brighter red there, then I can come up here with purple. I, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Okay, so, okay, so let's just go with the darker pink, actually, here. I think that'll be our solution. Sorry, I don't have this um, kind of resolved. Like most of my videos, it's just kind of experimenting here. Okay, so let's go with this. Let's go like that. Keep it a little bit streakier right there. Okay, so let's kind of create um, a contrasting darker sky up here now. Now what I have coming next, you know, in terms of some clouds that I'm going to be putting in here, that's going to be really tricky in terms of, I don't know about tricky, it's, it, it's going to be a real question about what color do I make those. And uh, I don't know, I don't have, actually, actually have an answer for that. Uh, because it's just going against all those other tones. I, I have a feeling that blue will be the one, but I'm not sure. Okay, this is just that salvia blue we used down there, and we'll use this as a base for, um, uh, for some darker blues here. Okay. I don't think I want to go with too bright of a blue. Let's use a little bit more blue here. So... <clears throat> When I say bright, I, I'm talking about like a color like this one right here. It's a super bright blue. Not light blue, it's medium blue, but it's bright in terms of its intensity. Um, the navy one will be a little bit more dull. It's a little bit more mellow. It's still reasonably bright, <clears throat> but not nearly as bright as something like this. Okay, so that being said, what I'm saying is that I just have this little spot here to utilize this darker blue, and hopefully that paired against um, this area right here, it'll make this area seem lighter by contrast. Okay, so we're just working with contrast here. These aren't, you know, we don't have like some flashlight in back of this piece of paper that's um, going to say, you know, um, light. Okay. We're just working with contrast. All right, so heading it down here like this, trying to sandwich this. So again, it's like some kind of uh, arcing rainbow. I think I actually did it. No. Okay, I was thinking I did it upside down. Okay, so <laughs> I was holding this thing upside down here. Okay, so the lighter we want something to stand out, um, we have to make the area around it darker and darker accordingly. So let's go one of the colors I was thinking about with my clouds was just gray, but I, I think let's do something here. Let's try to blend in some gray into this blue here. So it's just kind of a neutral gray. Uh, the Memento London Fog would be good. Yeah, it's quite a bit darker, and it, it is kind of dulling out that um, those blues there, just kind of making them um, a little bit more mellow, too. It's kind of neutralizing the uh, intensity a little bit. So that worked out pretty good. I don't think I want to go with... I, th I thought about gray for those clouds, but it might be too dull um, to use that gray.
Okay, kind of coming down in perspective, like a rainbow or something like that. But I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm necessarily going for a rainbow either. It's kind of more like a like a prism of light, like we're inside the prism. I think that's a, kind of a cool general concept. Let me try something here, though. We have all these different bands of um, color here. We might be able to tie these together a little bit more. Um, just with the use of some kind of semi-neutral right here in an antique linen. I don't know. But I'm thinking, I can't use it over here, I don't think. In the blue, maybe? I don't know. We'll see how it goes here. All right. I'm tempted just to put a couple drops of the uh, re-inker fluid and uh, sop it up if I'm going to use a lot of this. But let's just go right out of the pad. I, maybe I shouldn't use too much right off the bat. Um, okay, let's test it right in here. That, uh, it's influencing a little bit. It's influencing it quite a bit in here. I better not go up here too much with that. Because I, I don't want to turn this all this pink um, orange which is what it'll, it looks like it'll do. So let's just use it in here a little bit more. Kind of in this yellow area. Maybe it'll kind of look at, have it take on a little bit of a richer feel. See that right there? See the difference between that yellow and that one? So when you layer inks like that, um, you can get into kind of more sophisticated looking um, color schemes. That's what one some people were asking me about. Or that's the comment I made to someone on Facebook. I just said, um, they said, hey, you know, their their pieces aren't going to look like mine or whatever is good or whatever. And I just said, hey, I mean, they could, but um, one of the common things is um, between the difference between my pieces and a lot of other pe pieces by other people um, is just simply the use of more ink I'll I'll put on instead of you know two layers there or whatever or three if you you know talk about the combination of one layer over another um, I just use more ink than other people um, more, you know beginners who haven't done it before if people are kind of they have the concept down of um, all that blending you know and then it's the same but if you just kind of use a little bit more color and tones, because these are like transparent um, colors. Okay, now see, I just kind of added in that little green right there. So instead of just yellow and blue right there, and then they overlap and form green, then you just throw another one in there, and that kind of makes that real subtle difference like that. Or this one down here with that antique linen. You just throw in one or you know another color or something like that. And all these little things like that are really small. Um, when you kind of isolate them in terms of like a single application. But when we're talking about overall, they all add up to this collective um, kind of resolved piece that is kind of exponentially more um, rich than not having those types of applications applied in there to your piece. So, um, so it's like little things, you know, make a big difference on the overall. In other words, I'm not doing any kind of real big techniques, really, in anything that I do. They're all kind of real subtle things, and then they all add up, and they're all super easy types of uh, applications, too. Like right here, see this right here? It's a certain type of color or value, and I just go a little bit darker right here. So if you go a little bit darker right here, anything lighter than that just increases. So what you're doing is you're making something a little bit darker and then the lights increase this way. Um, they don't get physically get lighter, but they look lighter um, in contrast. So it's just all these little tweaks like this, and they're real easy to do, and they're not, they don't take forever to do either, they're real fast. Alright, so there we go, um, so far. We're going to put some 
trees or something like that across something like this. It looks kind of crazy, but um, it's kind of an abstract uh, type of uh, take on all this. Okay, so um, I was talking about adding in some cla um, clouds into the, this piece. I think that blue is going to be the uh, solution here, and I think it's this um, lighter blue. And I think it'll give me a good print in here. I don't think it's going to show up everywhere, so I think what we're going to do is, um, well, I was going to say, maybe I can go with a, like a darker blue and then go with a lighter one kind of in the interior, maybe. Um, yeah. I know I don't sound too assured. See, this blue right here, I don't know if it's going to be dark enough to show up in here. It might, but I'm not sure. Let's just start off with this this lighter one right here. Okay, the salvia blue. Okay, cloud. I have this cloud stamp in a lot of different um, videos and instructional videos, but one of the things that you do on something like this, especially in such a light field right here, you know, that I'm stamping it into, I think I had some black on this. All right, then this one. I normally don't even clean my stamps real well, but on this one, I think I'd better. I think there's some. I think I used black on this one last. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I just use water on my stamps. Okay, upon inking, what you do is you just take a dry paper towel, okay? And if you want it to blend in really well, if it's going to be in a lighter area, if it's a nighttime type of thing and it's really dark, then you don't need to really wipe off. But I would suggest wiping off pretty good, about like a half inch into the, into the uh, stamp. I'm not sure if I clean that off completely. Let me see. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, it's a little gray-blue. There's a little bit of black still on there. Okay, so ink up. Good half inch around the perimeter, get the perimeter really good, okay? So that, what, what I'm doing in here is I'm drying off the edge. It's wetter in the middle, a drier on the perimeter, so it'll give you a stronger impression on the inside, and it'll kind of um, dissipate the, um, the impression. Um, around the perimeter so that it stamps out lighter, and it'll blend in with the additional impressions much easier if it blends out on the sides like that, okay? So see that, how it just kind of, there's no kind of um, hard rectangle edge around the edges of that. It's because I wiped it off because it was just so dry. All right, so ink up, and it doesn't take a long time to do. This is a simple, easy process. You just ink up. Wipe off, you know, a couple seconds, and it's ready to go. I kind of change the angle slightly with each impression. Like that, see, it's like this. And the next one wasn't like exactly like that. I kind of change the angle like that and the height of it, so it gives it a little bit of variation. Okay. Okay, come in however high you want, like that. See that? It's kind of changing colors too, isn't it? You know, depending on what I'm stamping it over. Kind of blue in the... Um, yellows will kind of take on a greenish tinge. Okay, now I'm going to come in this way because the light is kind of coming from a certain area. So this is always top lit right here. So if the light is coming from below it, then you turn this upside down so you don't go like this, 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 and then come up here. You flip this around and use this this way. Um, so that's your technique there as far as the cloud goes in terms of the direction of it. And of course, technique wise, on the impressions is to wipe it off. All right, now let's see if this one even shows up in this um, pink here. It's Pink is fairly dark, so if this doesn't show up, then we can always take it and stamp it in a darker color. We'll just choose a darker color. No, oh, actually it did stamp okay. I mean, I can see that just fine. Uh, 
I don't know if it'll show up in the darker area. Yeah, it's not showing up down here at all, though. So I can, you know, do it in a darker impression if I want to. Um, hmm. Let's go for a real light impression of this one. I'm going to dab this off in the middle here, too, like that but especially around the perimeter like this, okay? And see how the light is coming from this way? And see, I'll take this, I'll turn it this way, where that's kind of pointed more towards that light, like that. See that? How it looks in, in context. Here a little bit more. I think I'm using it a little bit more than I thought I would. But I think it looks pretty good. It's it's kind of sandwiching the uh, the rainbow in between objects because I'm doing this lighter. I mean I'm doing it over the rainbow, but it looks like it's kind of the light is in front of it because the cloud is lighter. So anything that's lighter than this will look farther back. Um, in distance. Okay, see that right there? If I can come up in one there with a super light version, might as well. Let's do this. Let's take that, ink it up, and we'll blot it off first, and then we'll wipe it off even more. So maybe we'll get a really light impression right in here, closer to the light source. Let's see how that works. If it works, if it doesn't show up, then it, you know it's not any big loss, right? Okay, so see it? It's just that real kind of super subtle one right kind of in the, the midst in there. All right, now, do we want this to stand out even more? I think so. Um, I could use the same cloud, but... I think I'm going to go for a darker version of it. All right. I'm going to use this blue, I think, this navy blue. Oh my gosh, this thing is totally crumbling right here. That stamp pad, it's good for coloring, but this 20-year-old pad, it's time for a... It's getting crumbs all over this. All right, that is not to be used. Oh, let me see. All right, here's a good one. I use my pads until they just can't be used anymore. As you can tell, or as you might kind of uh, figure. All right, there we go. I think. Let's get those crumbs out of here. All right, let's see. I mean, another choice on this one is just black. Um, something real neutral. But I think let's let's try for the uh, the dark blue because the dark blue was used on the sides here. I don't think, I just don't think the, the gray would show up in that area, so I think we have to go with something darker. Alright, so I'm really wiping off the bottom, of, or the top of this right here. 
so that when I stamp it like this, where I've wiped it off, that'll blend in nicely with these ones in theory. So let's see if it works. Okay, and you want to overlap quite a bit. Large stamps, if you need to stand up to get a little leverage. Okay, so nice light, even pressure. You don't want to rock it or something like that. All right, so we got that. See that? Right there, how it kind of blends in. Okay. Now this one right here. You see those clouds? It'll be coming from this way. Up here, it went that way because it's being bottom lit up here, down here, top lit. Okay. All right. Overlapping, I don't know, maybe an inch into the, uh, the previous impressions. Okay, yeah, something like that. Huh. Let's go with a little bit more tone now, too. Um, I think my paper towels have had it there. That, yeah, this is, like, this is like a one paper towel uh, scene so far. I'm going to use my sponge applicator here just so I can get a little bit darker. You know, something uh, absorbent holds more ink, so it just, you know, I can apply it. I'm a little worried about kind of dragging in this direction right here because I don't want to smear my, you know, freshly stamped cloud image. So you just kind of do a dabbing type of motion instead of streaking. Streaking might pull ink off. Okay, so... Let's go with black, too. I'll just go for a little tiny corner here. Remember, you know, the darker you take some area, um, in terms of balance and uh, illusion, if you have um, something darker, even in a small little area, the lighter everything else will seem, so... I'm not adding dark to make my scene darker. I'm kind of adding dark to make my lights lighter. Um, from a uh, contrast uh, perspective. It kind of dulls things out over here, too. It's not like such a bright blue, which is good because then, you know, the rainbow seems um, lighter. I think I have a quote stamp that I'm going to use in here. I've been planning on it. I was thinking of, this is going to be somewhat sparse in terms of um, imagery, but I think this rainbow type of thing might um, lend itself nicely to um, some sort of quote. I'm going to see what I have here. All right, I think I have some good candidates, but um, I've kind of narrowed it down a little bit. Um, this one's pretty good right here. There's um, the, uh, the cloud aspect of it, but God writes the gospel not in the Bible alone, but on the trees, flowers, clouds, and stars. I think I'd want something more kind of terrestrial, though, with some trees and flowers. So a little bit, a few more components in this one. I like this one right here, The Sky is the Daily Bread of the Eyes by uh, Emerson. Nature is a mutable cloud, which is always and never the same. That one's kind of good, too, but um, I think the sky one just in general. There was another one that... Um, Love, love is, must be a light as much as a flame, and this one's about light, but um, 
I, I think, uh, I don't know, the, the sky is the daily bread of the eyes. I think that's that. And also, I think I, I want to add some other imagery in here, kind of some focal points, you know, uh, to add a little bit more drama into the scene. I was thinking about some birds and eagles. I like the idea of that, and I think um, that would fit in nicely with this um, light direction here. So, that being said, I'm going to go for something fairly... I was going to go for something a little bit more subtle, but I, I want to run some nice um, kind of directional beams in here as well. So, um, let's go for something fairly large here. I have this eagle right here. And I can have some beams kind of running behind it and in front of it. Um, some of these wings to really um, kind of add an element of uh, dimension into it, you know, um, beams in front, beams in back, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Um, but it can add a lot of uh, kind of depth in a, I don't know, I guess it's not really a subtle way, but um, certainly an easy way to do it. Okay, I'm just doing this in black right here. Okay. And I can have a solitary one. A lot of times I'm going for two. If I go for two, um, sometimes when you add two um, animals of the same type like that, it there's this kind of spirit of playfulness, too. I mean, it takes on a different, slightly different emotional type of um, quality when you have uh, a couple different ones like that. Yeah, let's go like this one. So I'll go for the larger eagle, and then I'll go for the smaller soar, and I also have this larger version of soaring, too. Okay, so... All right. All right, now we're going to ground this all to um, some trees. I've been often doing, doing the angled one. Look, it looks like you're kind of looking up at things, but I think I'll go pretty straightforward with this one in terms of a vertical approach on these. And I don't know, I'm always kind of going through in my head whether I want to do this. Um, kind of before or after I add in some other types of effects. But I think I want to do this one before um, my pigment ink applications here. All right, the only thing I have to kind of take into consideration here is I don't want to stamp over my eagles. I don't, I want to leave them nice and, you know, with a nice strong silhouette. Okay, change the angle, overlap you know, between impressions. side. Okay, that's the spruce. Nice, solid image. And you blend them together like that, overlap, and it won't look like the same image used over and over again because you've grouped it in some areas and have it a little bit spread apart in other areas. All right. I'm not sure. Let me see if I have... I'm not sure if I have enough room for variation here with this... Leafless pine stamp. Let's go for it. Hmm. 
debating. I have also have a kind of an intermediate. I think the intermediate might be better. <laughs> it might be a little bit too big. Let me see. Um, let me switch blocks here. This is Tack and Peel on my blogs for those who are new to these videos. I, I use um, Tack and Peel on uh, all of my acrylic blocks and that holds my unmounted stamps for a temporary mount. Okay. Yeah, smaller ones a little bit less obtrusive. Sometimes you want the other one for, you know, kind of have a little bit more dominant. Yeah, this one works out great. Okay. All right, so mm, let's let that set up. I'm going to give this about a couple minutes to set up and dry. Some of the ink in the... This is a very solid image. Um, right here you can see all that ink kind of puddled up in some of these areas right here, but um, especially when you're stamping it over kind of a damp area, if you kind of look at, you know, certain areas on here, you can kind of see it glistening still, and that those areas are going to be wet, so. Um, I want to allow that to dry just a touch before you go into it. In the meantime, let me kind of add a little bit more tone right here. This is black. See, I'm just kind of uh, really tapering that off like that. I'm really using a dry version of it, too. Okay. That should do that. All right. I have my, uh, my beam masking material right here. It's just a piece of uh, copy paper. And using the straight edge, I'll be able to add my beams of light in here. Yeah, you know, it's going along with the spirit of the rainbow um, in terms of direction. We wouldn't see that in a, in a, uh, in a rainbow, but um, this is my kind of my prism type of... Uh, rainbow here. So, um, let's see, I guess you could have other beams, like there's a rainbow here and there's beams coming in, you know, but I wanted to darken it like that, uh, if I wanted to do that. So, we're going to stay in the spirit and the direction, you know, coming from up there for these additional beams. Okay, so, kind of stay in the, you know, the direction that you've established, kind of going in that same direction. See, I, what I do is I'll take this top paper like this and I'll kind of line it up. See how things are kind of going off in perspective like this? So kind of line this one up like this, all right? Wherever, you know, wherever you start adding these beams in. And then just kind of line up the other one in accordance with that angle. It's kind of, it's not always apparent, it's not always apparent for me, but um, you know, as long as I keep it generally, like, see, I don't want to go like this here. It's more like that, you know, like that, okay? Maybe this is angled up slightly more. And then just, you know, angle it about like so. If you kind of get in the general vicinity, and then if you don't have one of the angles right, then, you know, just move your mask and add more pigment ink on to it. Okay. All right, your pigment ink applicator, just a cotton ball. This one I've used on probably three or four scenes at this point in time, so you can just keep using the same one. Okay, this is just a Hero Arts white pigment ink. You can use practically anything. I would recommend maybe not Brilliance ink because it dries so fast, and it's kind of a little bit harder to blend in as a result. But if that's all you have, you could just kind of use it a little bit more sparingly. 
All right, so with this, I'm kind of dissipating this too. I'm kind of out here, maybe a few less taps over here towards the light. I might add a little bit more so that we have a different strength beam coming in like that. And you can't even see it though, huh? it's really subtle. There it is right there. You see how it kind of dissipates like that? So, I mean, that doesn't have to be the strength of the beam. You don't just mask it off. It's like, oh, I can't see it. I want to go more. Then you just, you know, it's not hard to just remask like this. I, I, I want a little bit more right there. Okay. So you see that? And you have that beam. Okay. All right. So let's keep adding here. This is some really fun stuff. Let me see if that angle's correct. Uh, like, yeah, let's go down a little bit more. And also, I can see my imagery now. The kind of uh, something like that. Okay, a little bit more up here. You won't be able to see the beam too much on white over yellow. Plus, this white, it's translucent, it's not really opaque, so the colors underneath will show through, which is what you want. You kind of want to harmonize a little bit more, unless you're going for something really super bold and graphic, and you want, you know, the, uh, the beam to be super light. Okay, I'm being careful here. I picked up some of the black from that, I can tell. So that. Okay, so see it's going in front of that eagle wing. put this beam behind this tree, be the one that I'm working on right now, and behind this wing, so I won't go over it like that. So, so you just kind of work around it a little bit like this. Okay, it's kind of like this. Let's have some beam um, coming across this. How about behind this tree and in front of this tree? Okay, so you kind of go like this. Angle's getting a little bit steeper kind of as I move down here. All right, now see how white this is right here. That's you know this isn't going to show up at all over there. So okay, so behind this tree and in front of this one. And sometimes I curtain it, I'll put a little bit more like on one side of the beam than like on the bottom so I don't give it like a, you, you know, universal one strength beam, it, you know, light kind of, uh, you know, it's varied. Um, I think that looks better that way. So let's go like that. See this beam right here? This little subtle thing, I've just put more ink up here and less down here. And then it kind of peters out too, so it's kind of tapered. And I, I kind of like that. And then it's it's really fun to um, change the um, the width, so it has some real thicks and thins kind of a um, contrasting against one another um, in terms of shape. So you can think of these beams. These beams are actually a shape, right? And see, I'm kind of tapering it a little bit, a little bit more here, and a little bit less down here, okay? 
So you get that. See how it just kind of peters out like that? And that's really fun. And then, I mean, you can do all kinds of things like that type of thing. You can, let's have a real narrow one. Um, right in here. And you can even put kind of a real narrow, maybe strong beam over the top of kind of a, a wider, weaker beam too. So you can have beams over beams so it's like maybe the narrow one's a little bit closer to you so you get dimension within the beams themselves. So see that one kind of coming across like that. How it's lighter than that one. It's kind of with a real narrow one right in here, but let's kind of have it a little bit more subtle maybe. And I tell you what, I'll put it I'll put this beam behind you know, that eagle right there. Have it behind that eagle, but in front of this tree. <laughs> See that right there? Light beam goes in back of that one and in front of this one. Okay. Uh, I think we can get, let's go with one more down here. I like this kind of these narrow looking beam right in here. Let's go behind this tree right here and in front of these ones. All right. Not all right yet. Let, I like that the stronger beams, and let's let's do this one with a kind of a, a stronger beam within this narrow one right here. Or it could represent. I don't know. It might represent um, something in front of it or something like that. So it kind of, when you do it, like beams within beams, you can make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. I mean, the other beams might be light, but um, it's just like shading something. You can make something darker a little bit underneath it. It gives it a little dimension and roundness. So see this kind of narrow beam? Can't even tell where I had it. This narrow beam inside that other one, like that. Okay, so um, that is that. This is getting kind of shredded here. And I think it's time for a new one of these. This paper's getting all rippled. I think that has gotten enough usage there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more light up here where the uh, light is emanating from. Just kind of bring it out like this a little bit more. It kind of unifies the uh, the beams a touch. See this tree right here? Um, we can add some light to that tree too. Okay, so kind of blot it off a little bit. You don't want to go in with a big blobby um, cotton ball applicator. Okay, you see this right here where I'm putting that tree in light. Now that tree looks like it's being illuminated from up top. And see that we can do the same thing for these, all these other trees too. As long as it's not too dark behind them, you can kind of lighten them up like this. And it looks like they're being influenced by that light within the piece. See that right there? 
kind of gives it a little bit of softness as well. Um, I think it looks good with or without. You can also have it just, you know, a, a nice hard silhouette too, and that looks, you know, quite good against a, you know, that that background in there too. It looks a little bit more bold. This one kind of incorporates um, the imagery in a little bit more, as opposed to kind of having it set apart from it. Um, but both work either way. Okay. All right. Now, so this area in here too, I'm going to just bring some areas of light within this piece in a couple different areas just to oscillate things just a touch in here I'm kind of putting some of this white on tops of some of these clouds um, there's a chance of it looking a little bit awkward but when I build things up so slowly like this it's like I'm never really making a big commitment commitment to a certain color or application or texture. Um, it's just a really light version of it. And if I like it, then I could add more. Okay. So it's like taking things incrementally. It's not like um, if you have a dial that goes from one and then jumps to 50 or something like that. I'm taking I'm going, I'm going like one, two, three, four, five on a dial of like one through a hundred. So it's like a 1% addition of something. And that makes it really easy in terms of um, choices, because if you like it, it's just a real subtle change. Then if you like it, then you add more like that, and you've taken it up like one notch with five taps or something like that. So just work nice and slow, and then you know you won't have any kind of unexpected um, um, things that happen, Un unexpected, undesirable marks. Okay, I kind of lost this beam right here. Um, so, sometimes when you start putting things over things and masking, you kind of lose it a little bit, so let's see, easy enough to just redo, okay, like that, okay. It's really time for a new cotton ball. Okay, so reestablishing that. Actually, I can reestablish a few of these things. The the beams they do get they do dry um, lighter than what they look like when freshly applied to. So, especially when you're running them over um, darker areas like that tree there, for example. So let's go in that tree a little bit more. You kind of have to apply a little bit more than what you think you, you know, looks ideal. Because when it does dry, it changes it. Um, just for that, it's darker. There we go. Let's take this beam right here too. It's a real narrow one. Okay. This one right here, that one really disappeared too, huh? Better to always kind of have to reapply than uh, to do something that you can't kind of undo or redo. There aren't too many things like that. You can usually redo something and change things around after the fact. But I just assume not have to do that. So I call it under apply something. And then I just apply more accordingly. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so strengthening. Yeah, that one up there is super weak too, isn't it? A lot of adjustments here. 
uh, on, on the beams. Okay, I'm going quite a bit lighter up there with this one now. I don't want to have to do it again. So it's like, uh, get real light. And like I said, it'll dry um, a little bit um, lighter than what it looks like. So, my gosh, this one's just getting, it's light. I'm really having to build up on some of these. I want this one lighter here. Or maybe it looked lighter. Maybe I just didn't do it too light. It's not, uh, it's not trick uh, disappearing ink, <laughs> although it almost looks like it here a little bit. Okay, there we go. See that? How I kind of petered that one out too. All right, let's see. I'm watching this one. Let's go a little bit more on this tree. Let's curtain this um, beam right here. Oops. Let's put a lot more on the top part of it. All right. There we go. Really, uh, <laughs> you know, buried that tree in some ink there. So there you have it. Um, in terms of that ink there. I don't think I need it here, but oh, I forgot to do that quote stamp. I yeah, will do it still. Um, <laughs> I was going to put it in the beams. I just totally forgot of it. I was uh, so excited to get to those beams. Okay, so adding a few little highlights on the side of the trees facing the light. Okay. So, right here, it's kind of coming from above. Over here, the light is coming from the uh, left, so I kind of light some of those little branches and things like that on the left-hand side for little subtle little kind of details and whatnot. And, uh, let's see here. Sky is the day. Oops, I don't need my uh, tapping peel on this one. These ones are cling foam mounted scenic sentiment designs. Let's use this block right here. I don't have a block that's ideal for this, but. And I just kind of eyeball this. I just kind of line up that with that. Hmm. I really need to clean off. My blocks are so gummed up, the tack and deal. It's time to really wash those off. Let's see where I want this quote to be. Ideally, right, right in there. It's kind of hard to tell. There's so much um, stuff going on on there. Let's see. We'll get it like this, maybe. Maybe right in here, I think. From a visual perspective. All right. The... I wonder if I should do it in diversifying. Okay. 
practice runs here, making sure I'm getting my pressure right, especially with the block that's so much bigger than, uh, all right. Okay, sky's the daily bread. <laughs> I was kind of holding my breath there, saying I hope that comes out straight. That's how I usually stamp my quotes. I don't really line them up, you know, with a ruler and positioner and all that. I figure if it, if it comes out a little sideways or something, I'm not going to really sweat it. And just, you know, do a couple of your test prints like that. It kind of gets you... Uh, kind of configured in a way, you know, to uh, getting a, a good uh, intentional impression of what, uh, what you want it to, what you want that stamp to do. All right, now I'm looking for my white, bleed proof white, and where's my toothbrush? If you like me, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. You'll have something, and then you can't find it like a minute later. Unless I washed it off. Okay, I need to find my toothbrush. All right. Found it. It was right next to me. All right, let's go for a little bit of a texture in here. I wasn't planning on using this at all. Um, a little splatter painting in here. It just it just makes for a nice texture. It's kind of I don't know little particles in the sky, in the air, whatever that are illuminated. And sometimes having something crisp like that, little elements of light, can add just that right uh, contrasting touch uh, to a given piece. And it, it is another dimension, so everything that we, you know, or a lot of things that we do is, you know, we're kind of having this depiction of space, you know, from front to back or something like that. So, a little bit of Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, kind of diluted a little bit, okay. On a toothbrush for a splatter painting type of technique right here, okay. I find that if I hold this up, you might be able to see what I'm doing a little bit easier. Okay, so. So I don't know if you can see it. See all the little speckles right in here? It's right here especially. In here you can't really see it because it's it's white on really light, but I'm going to put some up here. And I really diluted this, so you can't really see it too, but here it is over the eagle. <laughs> okay, there's nothing on my brush here. It was too diluted. I only got like one or two sprays. Okay, getting some more on here. And really draining the brush too before I go on to it. Um, okay. All right, let's watch it up here in the sky area. See that little area up there? See those little speckles like that? It's just it's just kind of a fun little texture to to add to something. See it down here? It isn't it's a little bit richer in terms of a texture with that on there. I mean, it looks really great if it's uh, if you're doing a snow scene or something like that, or a nighttime sky with some stars too.
All right, so that is that. I do have it all over my hands, and since I was holding it up, you know, but this um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof, I, it comes right off, you know, and just in water, it's water-based. And it just rinses off instantly. It's not like a gesso or something like that, or a, you know, primer kills or something like that, that it takes forever. You know, you have to scrub it off your hands. Okay, so anyway, um, I think that is it. Um, kind of an interesting thing. I've been thinking about doing this um, kind of lighting scheme, this kind of left to right lighting beam type of color scheme, um, but doing it in different colors after I've been doing some blue ones lately. Um, and I think that looks fun. I think that's, you know, it's kind of a rendition of some sort of rainbow, you know, going through the, uh, what is that, the Roy G. Biv or whatever type of thing from top to bottom. I think it still represents light, you know, and the fact that we did it fairly light, and we did kind of a light application of those things, uh, of those colors in there. A little bit of a brighter, you know, where you want it to be for some variation, leaving some streaks of lightness in there, and then reiterating it with your white pigment ink and just your masked off beams like that. So a lot of adjustments with the beams um, and making them a little bit lighter here and there. See that one right there was really light. And as it's drying, it's setting up, it's getting um, kind of less contrasted um, against that tree. But that could be good in some ways, you know, it kind of mellows things out and kind of uh, blends things in a little bit, you know, a touch more. But um, I don't know, it's fun. You can do this type of um, color scheme and whatnot, especially if it's on a quarter page scene. It's just happens really fast. And I mean, it looks really good. Like quotes look really good against it. It could even, you know, you can do this type of thing with, you know, some beams and things like that. You know, for a birthday card, it's like happy birthday or something like that. You can have this kind of rainbow type of thing instead of just a rainbow pattern like that, it can represent light by incorporating the, uh, the beams in with the negative space that you've allowed, you know, um, a lighter area to remain of the card. So in other words, instead of streaking like this everywhere, you kind of streak here, streak here, and leave a little bit of area light. And then if you want to, you can, you know, with that simple masking of the uh, pigment ink, you can layer another beam over the top of it so this area right in here looks more three-dimensional and, uh, you know, kind of deep. Okay, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene. This is video number 500. I was going to do one with my son, but he's like totally busy right now. It's not really my 500th video, though. There's well over 500 videos. I mean, like in the Mood and Media series, I just did like 310 U, you know, and it starts at 310A, 310B, 310C, so on and so forth. But um, anyways, kind of as far as that, lesson number goes. This one's number 500. If you've been watching these videos, I appreciate the uh, you check it, uh, checking them out and taking a look. And if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see, don't forget that you can always kind of drop me a note and, you know, make a suggestion or something or wish, and I'll try to get around to it. But always fun stuff. Thanks for uh, sticking with me here through this scene. Uh, anyone that sits through a complete video deserves a medal, uh, I believe. Um, I'm not giving them away, but uh, kind of in theory. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in to the channel, and uh, happy stamping there. Get that quote down there like that. <laughs>